Hello, and welcome to coverage of Custom Standard Casual Matches. Um, today we're going to be watching a game between Zerpath and Fawzer. Um, Zerpath, we already know, is on white-black superiority, and Fawzer, judging by that uh, red-black land turn one, is probably playing red-black tradition right here. So both of these decks are mid-rangey decks, which each have their own uh, game plan. Zerpath's deck uh, aims to gain absurd, amount, absurd amounts of life and then convert that life into card advantage and eventually just a game-winning board presence through the superiority mechanic, which gives you an extra bonus, uh, essentially, like either it's a triggered ability or an on-cast thing, but essentially, as long as you have more life than an opponent, you get a special effect. For example, a corporate confidant. If you have more life than an opponent at the beginning of your upkeep, you draw a card and lose two life. Meanwhile, Fazer's deck is centered around um, the card uh, Tradition, which I'll talk about in a second. But first, Fazer Flame Blast, the Corporate Confidant, doesn't want to let Zerapath have a creature. So, and Zerapath's going to be tapping out for Theos R10. Uh, starts off weak as a 1-1 lifelink, but doubling all the life you gain in a, in a life gain focused deck is pretty strong, and it turns into a finisher. So Foster's deck is centered around a card called Tradition. Uh, essentially, you uh, it's a discovery, which is a new uh, mechanic type. Um, what it does is, when it enters the battlefield or at the end of your draw step, you put a counter on it. Uh, after three counters are put on it, you just get a static effect. And the static effect is, you can play cards, uh, you can play one permanent card uh, from your graveyard each turn, or non-line permanent card from your graveyard each turn. So it's a very strong card which lets you reuse um, uh, lots of your, uh, like let's say, like sack effects or just other disposable creatures. It's also why Fazer was content to use Dead Eye Shinobi as just a removal spell there to kill Teos R10. In the meantime, Zerapath has played L3T Equalizer. Um, which is essentially uh, uh, a planeswalker, which they gain life and can also they it's might Zerapath is using the minus two there, which you choose a per, an online permanent type. Each player controls the most number of that permanent type, sacrifices it. So father sacrifices Ghost in the Machine. However, Ghost in the Machine uh, has a special thing that when it dies, instead of going to the uh, graveyard, you upload it. So Uploading basically means that uh, you exile it, and then at, during, at any uh, time, or sorry, not any time, at sorcery speed, you can pay two mana and then put it into your hand. So it basically means that it never goes away. And having flying is good to get over a uh, Zerapath's board once Zerapath has it. Zerapath is holding up two mana here, so I could potentially see like public another public broadcast on end. Or it could be holding up Wander the Unknown just in case. So Zerapath's going to play Ghost in the Machine. Um, not playing anything on end, I guess just didn't have anything that cost uh, less than three mana in, in his hand. So Fawzer just replaying Ghost in the Machine forces uh, Zerapath to either have Exile Removal in the form of Taken for Questioning or Wander the Unknown, or Zerapath just has to keep minus two L3T. Which... Uh, Zerapath probably wants to break parity with L3T by um, having a Theos R10 or a Water into Wine, both of which double the amount of life that uh, Zerapath gains. Uh, meanwhile, Zerapath's going to plus one, uh, plus two L3T, each player gains three life, and then take him for questioning the Ghost of the Machine. That's exactly the removal it needs. So taking for questioning is basically just an O ring. But if you have more life than an opponent when it leaves the battlefield, um, it, you, your opponent doesn't get the card back, which is a very powerful effect. And then Zerapath taps out for deep net. So this is essentially a Necropotence variant. Um, it uses the aforementioned upload mechanic. So you pay a black, you're going to upload uh, a card from the top of your library, and then you can pay two life to put that card into your hand, which is very good in a deck which is all about gaining life. Meanwhile, Fawzer tapping three for Tempered Onkelim. 
It's a 3 3 for 3 generic, and you can either gain 3 life or deal 3 damage to an opponent on ETB. And then taps another 4 for Heaps Baron. So, interesting. So, it's, has, it's essentially like an aristocratic card. Sacrifice another artifact, each opponent loses 1 life, and you gain 1 life. And with every uh, creature in this deck being an artifact, or not every, but it looks like um, lots of them being artifacts, um, it does, it's not a surprise. So in the meantime, Zerapath uploaded Banish, paid two life to put into his hand, and then is going to Banish um, Tempered Onkelim. So Banish, basically, you exile a creature and then exile all copies of it from their hand, graveyard, and library. It's a very strong card in controlling shells or mid-rangey shells, even though it's a four mana sorcery removal spell. So, and we see the last card in... Uh, uh, in Foster's hand is another Dead Eye Shinobi. So even though Zerapath uh, only has two cards in hand and Foster only has one, uh, Zerapath's board presence right now is way better than uh, Foster, especially after minus twoing L3T to kill Heaps Baron. Oh, so Foster plays a Fangmarked Cave. So this is basically a flip land that. You can pay half your life to transform it into Hawkbora the Vicious. So Hawkbora the Vicious is essentially, it's a 5-5 five, five, uh, death touch haste. And uh, you can pay 7 mana to destroy target creature and then put, uh, I don't remember the exact number, oh, sorry, it's a 6-6, six, six, but you can, I believe you can put 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. So it's a very strong uh, win con. However, Zerapath can just keep uh, drawing cards here. And then, yeah, so has taken for questioning, uploaded um, as a removal in case uh, Zerapath needs it later. Um, Zerapath uploads Theos R10, plays it. Now L3T gains Zerapath 6 life and only gains Father 3. So now both players are, are at equal amounts of life, and then every turn after this, Zerapath starts to break parity. So Zerapath has the game pretty neatly locked down at this point. So is Fazer going to be flipping? Oh, so Fazer is not going to be flipping Fangmar Cave. Instead, Fazer is going to be using Dead Eye Shinobi as removal, killing Theos R10. Oh, Zerapath saying in response, um, paying two life, grabbing public broadcast, casting public broadcast, and gaining eight life. That's a very neat move there. And yeah, I guess Fazer wouldn't want to flip Fangmark Cave here because. Uh, he knows. Oh, he. But I guess Father. I guess Father is empty-handed, so he has to um, flip uh, Hawkbora. And it does have uh, pseudo haste, so it's going to kill L3T. But next turn, Zerapath can. Uh, next turn, Zerapath can grab uh, Taken for questioning, and then kill it. So losing L3T is definitely a blow for um, Zerapath, but it's fine because he can just uh, use Deep Net, grab Taken for Questioning, kill Hawk Bora, and oh, Zerapath has another L3T. So I guess instead just going to play L3T minus to it, kill Hawk Bora. Uh, and Fazer is empty handed while Zerapath has a huge board presence and 20 more life than him. And gonna play public broadcast, gaining even more life, cantripping into some, oh no. So sorry, wasn't playing public broadcast, was just paid two mana to upload two cards using deep net. And there's the titular card, there's the tradition. <clears throat> Unfortunately, so I guess this is why Zerapath was saving the taken for questioning, because it's an agnostic answer. and. Um, yeah, on end step, grabbing, taken for questioning, 
Next turn is probably just going to play it because tradition is not something you want to mess with. It's such a powerful card advantage engine. So I'm just going to take him for questioning the tradition. Pays four mana to grab both public broadcast and the tattered temple. And yeah, there's really, there's really no reason not to take him for questioning the tradition there. It's the only card Foster has. And Xerapath has access to lots of card adventure, so it's not as though it, uh, Xerapath's at risk of like getting blown out by, and let's say, Xerapath, um, sorry, at risk of Xerapath getting blown out by Foz of drawing a creature next turn. Xerapath can just cantrip a bunch with Deep Net and then hope to hit a removal spell. Instead, it's just hitting lands here, unfortunately. Corporate Confidant is nice to be able to play next turn. <clears throat> and Corporate Infiltrator is pretty good in this situation. Corbin Infiltrator might be a little cute, but as a Sulfuric Vortex to just be able to close up the game, not bad. <clears throat> and Water into Wine uh, makes L3 team much stronger. And yeah, Fazer's just going to concede. There's really not much Fazer can do against that board presence. Let's see out of the side what Fazer has. Could have like a Curse of Bleeding. Uh, it's basically... Two mana enchantment curse with flash, and when it enters the battlefield, um, the target opponent loses two life, and that opponent can't gain life. Um, Xerapath obviously has like taken for questioning to be able to remove that, but it's still like a really strong against the deck, which is whose entire like philosophy is gain a bunch of life. So both players keeping their opening hands at seven. Father's just gonna play evacuated bar and pass. It's always best to play your Erlu duels uh, turn one, because really you're not going to have a turn one play. And then Foster playing Currency. This is another discovery. Um, it creates two treasure tokens and then lets you sacrifice an artifact to draw a card. Um, since Foster's entire deck is artifacts, um, that's really strong. It also has a pseudo lock with another card, Toxic Scrap Heap. So I wonder if we're going to see that this game. Meanwhile, Zara Zerapath taps out for Teos R10, which is a strong turn two play. Such a good two drop. Oh, and wow, Fazer using one of the treasures to play Tradition turn three. That's really good. Only milling, <laughs> milling uh, a, a non permanent and a land is uh, not super great, but it's still, it's still reasonable. So Zerapath just swings out with Theos, gains two life. Oh, and Zerapath does have a taken for questioning going to grab that tradition, not messing with that card advantage engine. Okay, so now currency is online as a two sacrifice an artifact, draw a card. Um, Fosver, if Fosver has Dead Eye Shinobi, could just kill Teos R10 or just Flame Blast. I think killing Teos R10 here just makes a lot of sense. Or, or have another tradition, that works too. Mills up two more lands. It's not what you want to be hitting off of tradition. So Xerapath tapping four has the L3T, uh, going to minus two and choose uh, enchantment. No, go to plus two, just gain three life. I'm not sure I agree with that because I feel like just minus two, minus two does a lot of uh, work here because that that unless Foster has a third discovery, that guarantees a kill on tradition. And Foster mills two more lands with the tradition. That means Foster doesn't have anything that uh, he can quote unquote flashback with tra tradition. Um, does have a banish though for L3T, me meaning that his enchantments are safe. And L3T, as we saw, is pretty strong in this matchup. So, but I, I wonder if uh, killing Teos would have been was the right call, because Teos still presents a clock. And without Teos, uh, can't really break parity with L3T, but it might be that Fazer has a creature that he wants to play next turn without fear of it getting L3T'd. So we're going to public broadcast, gain eight, cantrip. And 
Zerpath is very close to having um, Teos online as a 5-5. Well, okay, not with Corporate Confidence. With, with Corporate Confidence, it's going to take a little bit longer because it's actively fighting against Zerpath's life total. Not sure if I agree with that. Because, but I guess more board presence is fine. You don't want, if Fazer banishes your, your Teos, you still want to have something to be able to attack with. Um, Tradition is online. Uh, but, and yeah, again, like we mentioned, uh, Fazer has nothing in his graveyard that he can recur with Tradition unless he plays something from hand and then recurs it. But I, I can't even think of what that would be. Like, Pay three Dead Eye Shinobi, kill Corporate Confidant. Pay another three using the treasure with play Dead Eye Shinobi from Grave, kill Teos. That's actually not a bad line. Instead, it's going to play Tempered Onkelim. Uh, Fazer is going to gain three life right there and go to end. So, uh, if Fazer doesn't have another play, what Fazer could do is. Um, Use currency, sack tempered onkelim, draw a card on end step, and then replay it. Having currency up also prevents tempered onkelim from potentially being banished by Zerapath. So tapping three for taken for questioning? No deep. Oh, Zerapath has deep net. So here comes the card advantage, and then Zerapath's going to wander the unknown to tempered. In response, um, Fazer's going to sack tempered onkelim to currency, draw a card. And yeah, with deep net out, this becomes a lot harder for Fazer. Just swings out with Teos and Corporate Confidant. Back to 40. Ironically, Fazer is still higher than his starting life total because of the L3T. Ooh, on. Oh, gonna shock the Corporate Confidant? I don't know if that's the right call because Zerapath already has um, access to huge amounts of card advantage with deep net, and then shock uh, like killing Teos before it gets out of like removal range is really important. Zerapath can replay. So Zer I'm sorry, Fazer is going to replay Tempered Onkelim, gaining himself three life, and again has two mana up to be able to to sack it in case of removal. Can chump block Teos. See, the problem is Zerapath can just dig deep with deep net now to try and find like, um, uh, to try and find, what's the name of the card? A public broadcast so that um, he can put himself at uh, double Fazer's life total. And then just swing out with Teos as a 5-5. Or maybe Zerpath will grab Corporate Confidant here and just play it. No, tapping three for, oh, a taken from questioning from hand on tradition. Yeah, not trying to go for Tempered Onclums, right move. And then, oh, wow, hitting more Teos Artens is not where you want to be. And yeah, Fazer's going to keep this loop going, sack Tempered on Kalim to currency, draw another card, hoping to hit some action, probably hoping to hit a Banish for Teos Artens. Okay, ha and has another tradition in hand, but mills another two lands. And the only hit that Fazer has in Grave is the Tempered Onkelim, which he just sacked. Actually, without being able to recur Tempered Onkelim, I don't know if sacking it was the right move. But let's see. Because now Fazer doesn't have any board presence to threaten with. A New World Order. Interesting. I think that's it's a spicy card. I don't think it's very good. Um, Especially in a deck where you're gaining a bunch of life. Or it's sorcery speed, so you can't like. Or I guess maybe the thought is uh, go super deep on deep net and then just kill them with your board. Of course, 
You can only do that really if they don't have, like, Fosser does have shock mana up, so could they kill Theos or something in response? And Zerapai doesn't have a way to put himself to one life. Nor does Zerapai have enough mana to upload enough cards to Deepnet to actually, like, get there. But if that's the purpose of New World Order, it's a really cute combo. I don't think it's good enough to main deck, though. Or even side deck. It's, it's not a very good card in general. Um, so... No! Fonzer's been so unlucky with these tradition hits. A land and another uh, non-land per non-land or sorry, non-permanent card. So tapping two for another currency. Um probably gonna sack this treasure token to the other currency to try and draw something. I guess can do it on end step and just potentially hold up something else. Meanwhile, Zerapath's just going to upload four times. Not really hitting anything super important, though having just removal on demand for um, anything that Fawzer has is pretty scary. And the thing is, it doesn't even matter if Fawzer gets removal for Deepnet at this point, because Zerapath can just, in response, just upload everything he wants. And they, they stay uploaded. So Zerapath can just go the, it has enough lands to just go the old, like, pay two mana to upload it, rather than just ha use the alternate cost of deep net. So Zerapath gonna <laughs> upload six times. I don't see a way for Fazer to win this other than, like, hoping to stall the game out until Zerapath mills himself. Not even attacking with Teos is interesting. I, I don't know why Zerapath wouldn't attack with Teos. It's not like, am I missing something? I don't think Fazer has any flash threats. Okay, Tradition is now online. So Fazer can play the Tempered Onkelin from his grave. Ooh, Toxic Scrap Heap. Killing Theos Artens. This is the card we were talking about um, that has a lock with currency. Um, essentially, uh, if you have the mana to be able to replay it and then to play it each turn and then sack it to currency on an opponent's draw step, they can't really do anything unless they have instant speed interaction. Problem is, Zerapath is skipping his draw step anyways and is just and has deep net, so Fawzer can't really do the loop. So sacking in the treasure token to currency, drawing a card. Yeah, but I, I don't know what Fazer's out is here. Like, I think this game is solidly over. Play is it taken for questioning? St stealing? Oh no, uploaded that taken for questioning. Is, is there about going to have a third taken for questioning for this tradition? Sounds about right. Also don't know why Zerapath hasn't played Corporate Confidant yet. I'm like, I feel like Zerapath should just upload Teos R10, upload Corporate Confidant, play both of them. Like, like what, is, like Zerapath is just uploading cards but isn't hitting anything. Like, you, like you need to play cards to win. <laughs> If, like, what are you digging for, Zerapath? Is that it? Corporate Infiltrator, pass it to Fazer, and then just have Fazer. I guess that's it. Just use it as a Sulfuric Vortex for Fazer. And then what? Pay two life here, and then 
play a public public broadcast to be able to pass it to corporate uh, pass it to Fazer next turn. I mean, sure, that is a win con, but I don't know why you wouldn't just play another creature as well. Especially because having a bunch of them under uh, your upload makes us that banish isn't really that backbreaking. Whoa, Foz are tapping everything for a big epic of Inishtu or epic of the. Oh no, I guess that was. Oh, I guess that was a misclick. Just gonna play another card and see. Yep, so what's. I feel like both these players are digging, but I don't know what they're digging for. In Zerapat's case, I feel like there's nothing to dig for because he's already won the game and he should just play creatures and be done with it. In Foz's case, I can't think of what will get him out of the situation. Okay, Dead Eye Shinobi to kill the Corporate Infiltrator. Makes sense. And with Tradition on three, Father can start playing um, Dead Eye Shinobi as just a bolt, unless Zerapat um, grabs uh, Taken for Questioning next turn. Which, yeah, I feel like Zer Zerapat had enough mana to just like, grab Taken for Questioning and Creatures kill tradition, and then play some creatures. Like, I don't know. Maybe there's some maybe there's some line or card that I'm missing here that Zerapath's afraid of, but it really feels that just... feels like Zerapath is just not playing the... playing well? Zerapath is saying, at the end of your turn, I'm going to download 13 cards. Is he going to try and go for the kill with uh, New World Order? Zerapath, does Zerapath have a way to drain Fazer for four? After playing New World Order? Or is the thought just play New World Order, play a creature. But then Fazer could potentially go Dead Eye Shinobi, Tempered Onkelim. Oh no, sorry. Zerapath is gonna New World Order anyways. Okay, what does Zerapath have that can kill Fazer? <clears throat> I guess maybe it isn't a plan of kill Fazer on the spot, it's a plan of play um, play New World Order and then Fazer is within range of being killed by my creatures. Unless Zerapath does have Border Makers in this deck, but Border Makers isn't even online because Zerapath doesn't have a, uh, an artifact. So Zerapath has um, enough mana to play New World Order and then play two creatures. A Teos and a Corporate Confidant. Yep, so there's New World Order, switching life totals with Fazer. So I guess Zerapath... Okay, so I guess Zerapath's thought was, this game is over. So I am going to have some fun. <laughs> because Zerapath is like, I already won the game anyways. Let's go for the um let's go for the spice. So then taken for questioning the tradition. That's also why I suppose Zerapath went in for corporate infiltrator, because then as a uh, corporate inf infiltrator as uh Oh man, it would be crazy if Fazer had double shock in response to um, New World Order, but only had one shock. Um, 
But in New World Order, Corporate Infiltrator, Fawzer, Fawzer doesn't have a way to sack Corporate Infiltrator and its sulfuric vortex is Fawzer's death. Now, Zeripat just goes the old fashioned route of play a creature and Fawzer is at four life. Tapping, whoa, tapping five, four, Mecha Dragon. Okay, that's really strong. And Zeripath is tapped out. So you're going to give it haste and buff it. It's basically just a six mana burn spell because Zeripath is going to untap um, Wander the Unknown it. Yeah, Zeripath has the Wander the Unknown in hand for Mecha Dragon. So playing Theos, who is now a 5-5. It doesn't have haste, unfortunately, but it does win Zeripath the game next turn. And then Wander the Unknown on the Mecha Dragon. And if Fazer doesn't have removal for this 5-5 Theos, uh, Fazer loses. And Zeripath also has the double whammy of Corporate Infiltrator. In response, Fazer is going to Oh, no, sorry. The, I, the, I thought Fawzer was tapping something, but Fawzer, it was just grabbing a mountain from Wander the Unknown. So even though Theo says 1-1, one, one, because Zerpath has double or like more than double Fawzer's life total, Theo says a 5-5 five, five lifelink. Okay, so Fazer has the Dead Eye Shinobi killing, but that doesn't work. Um, I don't think they realize that Teos is a 5 5. Yeah, they didn't realize that Teos was a 5 5. So, um, is going to double Dead Eye Shinobi, Theos R10. Zerapath still has the opportunity to pass Corporate Infiltrator to Fazer and then kill him in two turns. God, Zerapath is really just styling on Fazer right now. This really is just the style. So Fazer tapping four for another. Oh no, ban banishing his own Corporate Infiltrator. What a big brain play. Does it say owner? No, it's controller. Interesting. So Zerapad still retains his own his other corporate infiltrators. Yeah. <laughs> so the rabbit hole goes deeper. Fazer has to reveal his head and library to Zerapad. Um so Zerapad's gonna grab another Theos? Yeah. And just play the Theos here. It's a 5-5. Five, five. Fazer needs uh, another Banish or, or another double Dead Eye Shinobi. Otherwise, Zerapath wins next turn. This is this is the embodiment of stop, stop, he's already dead. And yep, Fazer concedes. Uh, good games. Zerapath wins a 2-0 on White Black Superiority over Fazer on Red Black Tradition. Until next time, this is Caillou signing off.